YouTubers, the whole internet is going to be buzzing about this today. Uh, I woke up this morning and I got a text at uh, 7.45ish in the morning. Ariel Sharon has passed on. Now, again, the whole internet's going to be talking about this. Rabbi Kaduri from Israel. A uh, dude was 108 years old, and before he died, he had a vision that Jesus was the Messiah. So I just want to say that there's people that say, man, that's an extra biblical prophecy, and you can't trust that at all. But let me throw this idea at you. Does it make any sense for Satan to tell a respected rabbi, a man who's 108 years old, you know, who has the attention of many Jews and the respect of many Jews, why would Satan tell that man to tell the Jews that Jesus is the Messiah? To me, that makes zero sense because that is a kingdom divided. Satan would not tell anyone, especially not that man, that Jesus is the Messiah because that uh, divides his kingdom. That is contrary to his goal. That is contrary to his mission. So, um, you know, Kaduri said that Ariel Sharon would pass away before the rapture. And given that prediction, uh, believe it or don't believe it, but look at the timing, look at what's going on. They're talking about dividing Israel in less than three months. Less than three months. And there's signs in the sun, moon, and stars that have multiple witnesses that now is the time. Um... Lunar Tetrad, if you don't know about it, uh, turn the TV off, start paying attention. Three and a half years after the Lunar Tetrad begins, there's the woman clothed in the sun, um, you know, prophecy from Revelation 12. That's serious stuff, you know, I'll, uh, I'll post another link for that, I'm not going to cover that here in this video. But I have several other articles that I want to show you because times are getting crazy. So, look at this. Now, here's a thought that I do want to share. Um, last night, I was sleeping, and uh, it must have been 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. And all of a sudden, I saw this insanely bright flash. I had my eyes closed. I saw an insanely bright flash, and it freaked me out. I was like, what the heck was that? And then I heard the thunder. Boom, 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 boom. That's how thunder sounds in my part of the world. Anyway, okay, so this is crazy talk, but you know, you look in the New Testament and it talks about lightning. Uh, Matthew twenty four twenty seven. For as lightning cometh out of the east and to the west, I prefer the New King James. Let's do this again. Um, for as lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Um, same thing out of Luke, and then. This one, you know, Luke 10, 18, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. It's been shown that Jesus literally said, you know, when you take lightning, that's the word, uh, Barak, and then from heaven can also be translated as the heights, means Bama. So, I mean, if you don't know this, you can look it up, but Jesus literally said in, it was either the, I think it was the Aramaic, he said, I saw Satan fall like Barack Obama. Uh, you know, the odds of that, come on. That's too... Uh, you, this is not coincidental. So, um, this is some serious stuff. This guy, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of Avigdor Lieberman. The guy kind of looks like Russian-ish to me, but I guess he's not. I don't know. Anyway, this guy, for the longest time, was uh, talking trash about the peace talks. And... Uh, I had a thing quoted, yeah, look, um, this guy, I'll just read the first two paragraphs here. Uh, the hawkish Israeli foreign minister, widely regarded as a major obstacle to peace with the Palestinians, has urged his country to accept the deal currently being brokered by Washington as the best offer it will ever receive. In a change of direction likely to shock the jaded Middle Eastern diplomatic scene, uh, Lieberman said that Kerry, 
uh, deserved praise and thanks for his efforts to bring Israelis and Palestinians together. Uh, so that's serious stuff. This guy who's been a hindrance to the Israeli side of the peace process, you know, he's uh, he's now on board and saying this is the best deal you're going to get. So take it. Uh, this one I find interesting. Kerry threatens to cut Palestinian Authority aid if no peace deal is signed. So the Americans have the Palestinians in a position where America has the advantage because we give them money and if we don't give them money they are poor you know so it's the same way with the entitlement mentality they keep giving to you giving to you giving to you but then when they want something they play that against you so you know that's how the entitlement thing is gonna work where if they uh, you know they keep giving you giving you giving you these handouts but someday they're gonna be like oh you gotta take this mark if you want to keep getting your handouts they get you addicted you know they get you addicted to money and then they threaten to take it away so they can get what they want so America has the Palestinians in a position where they can uh, force them into this deal you know you guys get on board with this deal or we take your money. This one. Jerusalem is the next stumbling block in peace talks. Uh, while it is highly arguable whether or not current U.S. brokered Israeli-Palestinian peace talks have made any more progress than previous attempts, uh, blah blah blah, but he's about to hit a wall. Jerusalem. Israeli officials who met with Kerry during the most recent visit insisted there is a consensus among Israeli public for reaching a final status peace agreement that leads to the Palestinian state. Um, but what is also true is that the vast majority of Israelis have consistently said they are unwilling to redivide Jerusalem and surrender the city's eastern half to become the capital of the new Palestinian state. And then, obviously, here the the title of the article is a quote from the Bible. Um, In that day, I will make Jerusalem a stumbling block, or uh, another translation calls it a burdensome stone for all people, that all that burden themselves will be cut to pieces, though all the people of the earth are gathered against it. All the people, all the people. The UN represents all the people and they are pro-Palestinian. Now, I mentioned earlier that the government gets you on this entitlement thing. They give you free money, free money, free money, you know, which is coming out of my taxes. And they'll give you the free money until they want something. And they'll say, oh, now you got to take this mark or you don't get your free money anymore. Motorola. Motorola was just recently bought out by Google. I don't know if you knew that, but Google, in my opinion, is the New World Order technology giant. Because since since Google came on the scene, I mean, I know they're doing a whole lot more than I'm aware of, but just what I've paid attention to, they seriously grew the... the um, map coverage like you could get satellite images on your computer at home you know and you can look like what I remember when Google Maps first came out that you could zoom in with a satellite and see your car in your own driveway and that freaks people out now people are you know whatever about it but then they came out with Street View where you know they took pictures from the Street View in a 3D kind of camera deal and you can see people standing in the front yard you know so Google they've taken over YouTube they've taken over the internet they've taken over the search engine deal so you or Google has uh, has been a major player in advancing the technology of the end times so Google now owns Motorola and I mean just the title itself is nuts Motorola patents an e-tattoo 
that can read your thoughts by listening to unvocalized words in your throat. You know, the nanotechnology is getting insane. You know, look at this. I mean, this is just like... <laughs> The, the things that they're doing with technology, just the fact that like you don't even need an RFID chip anymore, but you can put the same components in this tattoo sticker looking deal. You know, if anybody tries to put one of these on you, run for your life. Run for your life. Um, another thing, wow. I mean, this is seriously crazy more Americans believe aliens have visited earth than believe that Jesus is the Son of God and look at the highlighted word yeah. strong delusion you know the Bible talks about in the end times there will be a strong delusion this actually links directly to the Bible verse um, and of course they didn't highlight it for me strong there we go um, you know God shall cause uh, and God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness so if you have pleasure in unrighteousness and uh, you know you're not in a close relationship with Jesus Christ you are in danger of falling to the strong delusion and obviously this strong delusion is taking hold of people because according to this article 77 percent of all Americans believe there are signs that aliens have visited earth only 68 percent believe that Jesus is God or the Son of God uh, you know just just that little bit right there is enough to tell you what you need to know um, <clears throat> People are falling for this deception. When I first got saved, uh, back in late 2007, early 2008, I got my hands on this book. And this book um, is put together by Ken Ham, and it's multiple articles explaining the young age of the earth, how dinosaurs existed with mankind, how it's impossible for aliens to exist because you know Jesus only died once for the sins of man for you to have aliens there has to be a gospel for them because how can we have sin here and yet Jesus died for the whole creation how can you have aliens unless they also had a sin issue unless they also had a salvation issue so the reason for aliens is for the devil to substitute, uh, you know, it's not the gospel for them anymore. Like, it's a, it's a, substitute, a substitute gospel saying that aliens came and seeded our planet and that we came from, you know, aliens just being our evolutionary whatever, you know. It's all garbage. It's all lies. And it's been proven that in alien abduction scenarios if you call on the name of Jesus Christ everything comes to a screeching halt because aliens are demons done deal that's it that's it no argument so um, what else can I show you today I mean that's uh, that's about all I've got right now I'm sure I'll come up with something a little bit later but you know, Ariel Sharon just passed away, and the 108-year-old rabbi who had a vision of Jesus as the Messiah says that the guy's going to die right before the rapture. And three months from now, they're trying to put a framework agreement on the table. I'm not saying, you know, I don't even think that it's they're trying anymore. I think it's they're doing it. <clears throat> um... One last thought, my uh, my health insurance, I just got a thing with my health insurance, I don't know if you can see that, but 
health insurance. And for months, you know, I have private insurance where, you know, my uh, the last job that I had, they didn't provide insurance. So I got private insurance on the side. Uh, I thought it was pretty good coverage, and I was paying 100 a month. I just got a notice where next month they want it to go up 250%, $250 a month to comply with Obamacare. And, you know, I'm going to tell you this because I want to, you know, be one who practices what I preach. Because in James chapter 5, I had to rearrange some things so you can see it here. Um, I put a status on my Facebook that said basically, uh, you know, my health care is going up 250%. And how many people actually believe what the Bible says in James 5, 14 through 16? Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. So, in my Facebook status, I was saying, you know, do you really believe what the Bible says? Do you really believe what God says? And I'm going to practice what I preach, and I'm going to cancel my health care. And Jesus is going to be my health care. I'm going to trust him to cover me, because if you can't do that now, what are you going to do when they force Obamacare and you have to have the mark of the beast, when you have to have an e-tattoo to get health care, to get food stamps, to get unemployment, to get Social Security, to get Medicare, to get your prescriptions, to get anything, to have a driver's license? When they tell you that you got to take an e-tattoo, that you got to take an RFID chip to be part of the system, it's the mark of the beast. You can't be a part of that. You need to cultivate your trust and faith in Jesus Christ now. If you can't trust the Lord to live without health insurance, you're in a bad position. Which is why I'm cutting this off. And, you know, it's up to you. Go to prayer about it. But, you know, I'm not saying everybody dropped their health insurance. But what I'm saying is, you know, check your trust with the Lord. How much do you trust Him? Do you trust that his word is true that you can go to the elders of the church and get healed or do you trust that God can only use a doctor to do surgery on you you know that's putting a middleman between you and God that's saying that okay God I don't believe that you can do a fully miraculous thing without the intervention of man that I need a doctor to put a scalpel in me cut out the middleman go straight to Jesus you know if you really believe what the Bible says act like it with that said, Jesus is the Son of God, the only way to heaven. If you don't know Him personally, if you don't have a relationship where you talk to Him, then you are in trouble. So get that straightened out. Accept His gospel, and uh, you know, according to Romans 10, 9, 10, and 11, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, and you shall be saved. And anyone who, uh, you know, confesses the Lord Jesus Christ will not be ashamed. Get it straightened out if it's not straight already. Alright? God bless.